with a chapter so quick and short. And oh, I think, oh, there's a preview of the next book in here. Let's see how long this book is. Book is. Ooh, over 300 pages long. I wonder how many chapters there'll be at the end. Make a prediction. So I'm going to start reading chapter 30. It was 7 a.m. in Boston, 2 p.m. in Jerusalem. Dr. Zim stared anxiously at his satellite phone as if by staring, he could somehow make it deliver the message he'd been waiting for about Max Einstein's whereabouts. He'd made a deal with an agent who had weaseled his way inside the Change Makers Institute's Israeli headquarters and for the bright, right price was willing to betray everything he had sworn to defend. The undercover informant had confined that a, oh, sorry had confirmed that a girl named Max was among the nine child prodigies undergoing rigorous testing and evaluations inside the CMI building. The girl had shown a keen interest in all things related to the late Albert Einstein. Of course she had, thought Zim. How could she resist, given who she is? But why had Carl and Isabel taken the girl to Jerusalem? And why were they treating Maxine Einstein as if she was just another run-of-the-mill genius? Didn't they know who she was? Where she had come from? <laughs> Apparently not. Otherwise, they would have taken much more stringent security precautions. How could they let her go unguarded into a public place like the Einstein Archives at the Hebrew University? Why hadn't they screened their security personnel more carefully? Because, Dr. Zim thought with a grin, they have no idea who they are up against. Me and the core, of course. The confirmation that the girl was in Jerusalem had bought Dr. Zim some time with the Corps' fretful board of directors. Now his two operators, formal special forces officers who liked the Corps' salaries better than their own country's armed services, simply had to nab the girl, transport her out of Israel, and deliver her back to where she belonged, with Dr. Zim. The phone thrummed. Dr. Zim snatched it up. Yes, status update, please. We've lost her, said the voice at the other end. How? Her friends have friends. What? The science museum is swarming with Shabak security officers. I think some of her protectors might be Mossad. Mossad? The Israel, Israeli National Intelligence Agency. Their CIA. What about Yaha? He is with them. He plays his role well. Came screeching up to the museum in a minibus filled with seven children. Different races, different nationalities. However, at this moment, the curly-haired girl you're looking for is surrounded by a small army of security guards. Dr. Zim considered this new development. The involvement of Mossad meant that perhaps Carl and Isabel did have an inkling as to who Sam Einstein truly was. It also seemed that the Israeli Defense Forces would be guarding her the same way they would protect any its extremely valuable human asset. He reached a decision. Stand down, he told his operators. Head for the border. Border. Israeli has too much security. If Yahav has not blown his cover, I must assume you two have blown yours. He will be able to continue tracking Miss Einstein's movements. If she leaves Jerusalem, we'll have a better chance to grab her from the protection, far from the protection of the Mossad. We've waited this long. We can wait a little longer. Enjoy your time in Lebanon. Dr. Zim disconnected the call. It was now 7.05 a.m. He would wait to make his next call. It was too early in the morning. The news about Max Einstein would make the chairman of the Corps grumpy enough. He'd be even grouchier if the call came before his first cup of coffee. <laughs> Chapter 31's coming up next.